You still in the studio working on music, too? Aren't I always in the studio working on music that nobody buys? So, um... Oh, wow. We all know Raven Simone as the psychic fashionista on the 2000s Disney sitcom That's a Raven. Or as Galleria from The Cheetah Girls. Or if you're a little older, you may know her as Olivia from The Cosby Show. A lot of us are also aware that Raven recorded music at some point in her acting career, which is typically part of a Disney star's career trajectory. But not many people know that Raven's music catalog expands across four decades, and she's recorded dozens of songs and released numerous albums throughout her career, though her music didn't see much mainstream success compared to the white Disney Channel stars. In this video, we will be revisiting Raven Simone's music career. Raven Simone Christina Pierman was born on December 10, 1985, in Atlanta, Georgia. At just two years old, she signed a deal with Ford Models and started appearing in advertisements and commercials. By three years old, she had landed a main role on the sitcom The Cosby Show. At five years old, she signed a deal with MCA Records, but her recording career didn't start until she was seven. Yeah, you, 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 you look adorable. Now, you're gonna sing a song? I didn't even know you sang. Yes, I sing. Huh. Do you sing well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love you. Is there an album coming out or something? Yes, there is. Oh, okay. Now, when will it be out? Um, I don't really know yet. Oh, okay. A little love Like a Raven made a guest appearance with the Boys Choir of Harlem on Broadway as part of their 25th anniversary celebration. Very early on in her career, she was aligned with a lot of music industry heavy hitters. She did a musical number on her sitcom, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and even performed with the famous Winans family during their Christmas special. She started taking vocal lessons with singer and songwriter Missy Elliott, who was still up and coming at the time. On April 15, 1993, Raven released her debut single, That's What Little Girls Are Made Of, written, produced, and featuring Missy Elliott. The hip-hop song samples both Funky Worm by Ohio Players and The Payback by James Brown. She did live performances and interviews on various talk shows to promote the track, while also touring inner-city schools. When Raven goes to school, it's for earning, not learning. But when she's not filming in the TV studio, Raven is on the road promoting her debut album by touring inner-city schools. And the driving force behind this promotion is Chris, her ever-present dad. The knee-high homegirl soon had the kids rocking in the aisles as part of a community program. But these are benefit gigs with a difference. Her flyers promote a message to stay in school and in your spare time help sell those records. Are you going to call the radio station? Why do you think it's important to do schools? Because that's, that's the ones that... Um help you buy a record and stuff. And they had a um, record store next to it, so I went there and I signed some autographs. She's only tiny, but when it comes to playing the publicity game, she's massive. Even I had to wait in line. This is one mini mogul who knows exactly what the bottom dollar is. Not that she's seeing them yet. That's what little girls are made of peaked at number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100. 
Her debut album, Here's to New Dreams, was released in June that year. But the reviews were lukewarm and sales were disappointing. It failed to chart, and Raven was dropped from MCA Records in 1995. A year later, Raven and her father founded Ray Blaze Records under a distribution deal with Crash Records. Then in 1997, she recorded the songs I Can Get Away With Anything and What's Wrong With This Picture for the HBO series Happily Ever After, Fairy Tales for Every Child. I may be young, but I'm no child. You think I'm not too young, just why? Raven continued to find success with acting like a role in the 1998 Eddie Murphy comedy Dr. Doolittle, and also appeared on Disney for the very first time when she scored a role in their 1999 movie Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. In between her busy television schedule, she somehow found time to record music. In February that year, 14-year-old Raven released the lead single of her sophomore album titled With a Child's Heart. She also recorded a ballad version as a cover of the 1966 Stevie Wonder song for the B-side. Three music videos were made for each version of the song, including a remix. In May that year, she released her second studio album titled Undeniable, and it includes a track titled I Love You that was written for her by Stevie Wonder himself, who also provided vocals. But the reception for the album was average, with one music critic writing, it doesn't quite hit the levels of such peers as Monica, Brandy, or Britney Spears. But Undeniable does have enough strong moments to go a long way toward establishing Simone as a credible vocalist. Raven followed the same promotional formula used for her first album, a school tour and televised performances. Not many people know that Raven joined the American boy band NSYNC's tour as one of their many opening acts, and this became one of the biggest tours in 1999. But the album turned out to be another commercial failure, and Raven was dropped from Crash Records the following year and sold her share of Ray Blaze. Either way, her hard work was still paying off because Raven eventually landed a starring role in the hit Disney teen sitcom That's So Raven, and she transformed into a mega teen star. That's So Raven premiered on the network on January 17th, 2003, and it became one of the network's highest rated shows with nearly 2 million viewers a week, tying Hilary Duff's Lizzie McGuire. This January, Disney Channel is bringing you a brand new original comedy, That's So Raven. Bam! Original comedy of 
psychic proportions. Coming in January, only on Disney Channel. This series was the only show on the network to surpass 65 episodes. That's so Raven received two Primetime Emmy Award nominations and won seven NAACP awards. The sitcom also became a successful merchandise and franchise during its run. The items included a novel series, dolls, board games, school supplies, jewelry, a fragrance, and a clothing line. A line of video games was also developed for Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS. By 2005, the merchandise based on the series had grossed over $400 million. Raven managed to do all of this as the network's only black female star. The television show also provided Raven the opportunity to showcase her singing. Not only did Raven sing the theme song, she also sang on both of the show's soundtracks and performed musical numbers in some of the episodes. Outside of filming her hit show, Raven recorded songs for other Disney films like Grazing in the Grass from The Lion King One and a Half, This Is My Time from The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, Bump from Ice Princess, Superstition from The Haunted Mansion, and Life is Beautiful from Go Figure among others. Then in 2003, she was cast in the musical television film The Cheetah Girls, and it became Disney's highest rated movie with over six and a half million viewers during the premiere. The talent show's auditions are tomorrow. The Cheetah Girls are first in line to win this thing. Your dreams are very important to us. Friends help friends make their dreams come true. They were just trying to win their school talent show. Then, Johnson. Raven recorded music as part of the group, and the film's soundtrack was the second best-selling soundtrack of 2004. That year, Raven entered a new recording contract with the Disney-owned label Hollywood Records, and she got back in the studio to begin recording her third studio album. This time around, she teamed up with even bigger R&B hitmakers like Scott Storch, Robin Thicke, and Tricky Stork. In January of the following year, she released a five-track EP named Advance to promote the forthcoming album. Ahead of the release of her third album, Raven revealed that she incorporated hip-hop, alternative, and neo-soul in the record. She said, I didn't want to be limited to just one genre. I asked the label executives, why can't I sing everything? The idea for this album was in my head for a while. Everybody said, you can only do one genre, not all of them. And I said, well, this is my time to show you. The sequence tells my story very fluidly. There are no bumps where you're like, why does that song jump to that song? I submitted five tracks and was an executive producer. It's my baby. With my earlier albums, I was too young to understand that the writing is the most important part of expressing yourself. With this album, I get the chance and have the confidence to express what I have to say." End quote. When asked about constantly being compared to Hilary Duff, she said, I've been working since I was three. I don't mind if I go down the same path as Hillary. How much did her movie make? How many albums did she sell? She's the girl right now, but I'm gonna be the next Raven. The second single, Backflip, premiered on BET after an Access Granted special on August 25, 2004, and it got heavy rotation on Disney Channel, BET, and MTV. She also performed the song live in Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade later that year. The album titled This Is My Time was released on September 7, 2004 and sold nearly 20,000 copies in its first week, going on to sell nearly 300,000 copies domestically, which is a lot more successful than her first two albums. 
This Is My Time debuted at number 50 on the US Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop Albums chart, and at number 51 overall on the Billboard 200, making it Raven's first album to chart. Raven also made it clear that it was important for her to set a great example for kids who looked up to her. It's not necessary to flaunt your body or talk nasty. If you just give a look or a hand gesture, you can catch whoever you want to catch. Your personality, the way you portray yourself, what you say, being intelligent, that's what mystifying is about. To promote the album, she embarked on a 40-day tour across the United States, including several concerts with Radio Disney and talk shows. After the success of the album, Crash Records sold their rights to her second album, Undeniable, to TMG Records, and Hollywood Records re-released it on October 31st, 2006 as the new title, From Then Until. Even with all of the success on the two franchises and having the number one show on Disney, Raven still had a hard time finding the same amount of mainstream success with her music as her white peers. Her label mate Hilary Duff's Metamorphosis album sold over 3 million copies in a year, and her self-titled album that followed a year later also sold over a million records in the United States alone. Then Miley Cyrus of Hannah Montana came along and did even better numbers. Could it be that Hollywood Records wasn't willing to spend money to promote Raven's records, or was the public just not a fan of the music? Raven reprised her role as Galleria for the Cheetah Girls one last time for the second film in 2006 and provided vocals for their second studio album. But Raven walked away from the franchise after feeling excluded from the Cheetah Girls and called the experience clickish. She decided to focus on her solo music and film career. In May 2007, two tracks were leaked to the internet from an untitled album. In early 2008, she released a cover of the Frankie Smith song, Double Dutch Bus, as promotion for her film, College Road Trip, and also the lead single from her self-titled fourth studio album. The album was released on April 29, 2008, and is her last studio album. Although Raven collaborated with hit makers The Clutch, Sean Garrett, and singer Mario to make party bangers, the album stalled at number 159 on the Billboard 200 and only sold 4,000 copies in its first week. But she still embarked on a tour to promote it. After the disappointing sales, it was announced that her contract with Hollywood Records would not be renewed. After that, Raven took an unofficial break from releasing music, but she often teased the fact that she's working on music. You still in the studio working on music too? Aren't I always in the studio working on music that nobody buys? So, um, oh, wow. I am on my fifth. You bought it? That you just saying that because you want camera. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just playing with you, sweetheart. You probably are. Um, no, I am working on my fifth solo album, and hopefully it'll be out by next year. <laughs> Let's hope y'all keep saying that when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> While Raven didn't release music for over eight years. She still sang on Broadway in the Sister Act musical. In 2016, she made her return to music when she released the two tracks, Serafina and Cruise Control. The following year, she appeared on Todrick Hall's Straight Out of Oz album and has released three EPs since 2019. Did you guys realize that Raven Simone had such an extensive music catalog? And also, please let me know your thoughts on why her music probably didn't do so well commercially. Like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.